have been all the students, educators, counselors, ladies, and gentlemen. We please stand. Receive the right principles of all men of the world. Counselor Dr. Kevin Dubois. Worshipful Sheriff of Norwich, Caroline Gerald, City Clerk, Leo Middlebrooks, and the Chief Executive, Louise Ross. Please be seated. Welcome, everybody. A special welcome to new councillors, to special guests, and because we're online, those who are watching, some from overseas. I have a couple of statements. One is, if you wish, photography is permitted. And I mention that because um, the online, although it will be good, it will often be of whoever's sitting in this seat. Um, there is an official photographer as well, if you want to ask about photographs, but council meetings may be photographed. So the other thing I want to say is this is the first full-blown on steroids, bells and whistles, mayor making for four years. So we're all getting a little used to it, looking forward to it. Then maybe one or two moments of hesitation for obvious reasons. Now the practical issues to mention to you, um, there's no fire drill planned this afternoon, so if you do hear a fire alarm, please make your way out of the building in a calm, orderly fashion as guided by the many fire marshal trained staff as there are, so they'll be able to point to where you need to go. People with mobility issues should gather in the foyer on the left hand side as you go out and be near the balustrade where assistance will be forgiven. Yeah, it will be provided. It will be forgiven. <laughs> Toilets are at the far end of the corridors just outside. As you leave on the left, ladies are near the end and on the right, gents are near the end. I should here now make a few announcements and communications. I won't make many because I will put most of this in the speech. I shall make in a short while. Um, but a special highlight, certainly for me and the city, was only a few days ago I was in Rome meeting the Pope because of the city's special attachment through Mother Julian of Norwich, the anchoress. It was 650 years since the publication of her memories. Um, di sorry, divine. I've forgotten the title. Revelations. revelations. Divine revelations, and um, she was also another Norwich first, the first woman to be published in the English language. End of the announcements. Um, I'm going to call upon Councillor Ackroyd now, we're right there, um, to move the election of a Lord Mayor of Norwich. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And may I take the opportunity to thank both you and the Sheriff for your dedication and hard work during the last two years in office. And I know this is 
almost a sad day for you both, isn't it, as you come to the end? Moving on to Councillor James Wright, I will begin by reiterating what I said at March Council, which is that I first came face to face with him in the very early hours of a June Saturday morning, when he had narrowly avoided being born on Friday the 13th. A very positive omen for us all, I believe. James was born at what was then called the end end, and spent his first few years living in Eton, where he attended Eton Elephant's Playroom, which is still going strong, I might add. Our family move, when he was four, meant that he subsequently attended Avenue First and Middle Schools, followed by Earl of Middle School, the arrival of BBC computers, provided a focus for James, during morning and lunch breaks, whilst the acquisition at home of a tape loading ZX Spectrum, if you know what that is, meant that the stage for James was set. At Earl High, along with a small group of friends, he began buying in and selling off computers to fellow students, with a watchful eye kept by Andrew, his father of course, Age 13, the bank would not let him have a personal checkbook, but oddly, were very happy to let him have a business account. This is no doubt led to his particular interest in young entrepreneurship. After school, he studied at Norwich City College for a degree in business information systems. Never wanted to let the grass grow under his feet, in his spare time, he sold kitchens at a local store. His IT career took off in London, working for the BBC on IT projects. There followed a time with a medical education company, where latterly his role as global head of IT saw time split between London and the east coast of the United States. He currently works in his own business, providing IT services to Norfolk primary schools and charities. James takes a particular interest in education matters, one that he shares with Kate, his wife, a school and teacher. He served as a school governor for 15 years, including as chair for over a decade. He is currently vice chair of governors at two local schools. James comes from a family that on both sides were heavily involved in the Methodist Church in Norwich with its belief in community service. He grew up in an environment where the issues being faced by local and wider communities were at the heart of everything. And going off in a coach for a lobby of Parliament was not an uncommon event for him. James' interests over the years have included a decade-long DJ residency at the waterfront. But having taken up running in 2019, he has now run over 120 park runs, recently completing the London Marathon, fundraising in memory of his dear friend and election agent, Erland. He is co-director, or event director, of Eton Junior Park Run, and is a Park Run Event Support Ambassador. James would bring his wide-ranging knowledge and interests to the year ahead. I know he is passionate about the present and future of the City of Norwich and the well-being of his residents. He sees the role of Lord Mayor as a wonderful opportunity to help to promote these things, especially in the difficult times that so many people are experiencing. His own background means that he feels at home with people of all ages and from diverse backgrounds, and he will work to continue the civic tradition of welcoming strangers and bringing the peoples of Norwich together. I believe that James, with the added bonus of Kate as Lady Mares, and Katie John, as consort, will make a wonderful Lord Mayor. And I am deeply honoured 
to have been given the opportunity to speak about him. I therefore move that Councillor James Wright, having the necessary qualifications, be elected to the office of Lord Mayor of this ancient city for the ensuing civic year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Ackroyd. I call upon Councillor Stunnard to second the motion. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor, and uh, may I again uh, congratulate you on your service and uh, commitment to the uh, work that you've been doing for the last few years. Lord Mayor, I give you the greatest of pleasure to accept the motion that Councillor James Wright be elected as our Lord Mayor. I know that I can speak for all in this chamber of repeating the changes between the superb person who has made important civic leaderships. All those who have worked with him, whether it be in committees, working groups, in meetings, inside and outside this council, will know and will be impressed by his decency, civility, his cooperative and collegiate approach to politics, and his effectiveness as a council. It's no exaggeration to say that when James speaks, his council falls silent and listens, and his presence is keenly felt. He's an origin man through and through, so the honour of becoming our city citizen and the highest city office holder in Tandia will have special and powerful meaning to him. But also for his mother, uh, fellow councillor Ackroyd, who sits here today. And I feel so rightly proud of the son and the family. James was born and raised in Norwich, as we've heard, spent his first few years living in Eton before moving closer to the city centre. Despite working away quite a bit in his own career, we've heard some of that just a moment ago, home almost always remained Norwich, and he's now lived in the Hat St. House near Roman Cemetery for nearly 25 years. James attended Abbey first at uh, middle school, followed by Earlham High School, and as we've heard, he studied at Norwich's College of Career and Business Information Systems, he's led to his career at MIT, which in London working with the BBC. We've also heard uh, that he worked for uh, a medical education company where he became Latin <coughs> head of global IT. That's quite a top line. Head, global head of IT. Um, and this all this time is flipped to another in the East Coast of the US, as we heard, but of course we always make that home. James has served as an Oregon Councillor since 2010, has been leader of the Lib Dem Group since 2011, and has been chair of Smith since 2014. He also served as Deputy Lord Mayor to Council of Driver, Arthur, and Maxwell. James has been an Norwich City season ticket holder for several years, taking over the ticket previously held by his stepfather. And he's got some football highlights as, uh, as well, having been attending the Milk Cup in 1985, the promotions playoffs in 2015, and the 2019 promotion party at City Hall, which we all remember very well. He took up running in 2019 as he heard initially using the NHL account to 5K and ran his first park run in April 2019 to celebrate the wedding of friends. As you've heard, he's never looked back and he's now done over 20 park runs in nine countries. Again, yeah, pretty impressive. Well, I think so, because I'm going to have some I know that James loves our city with all his heart. He's, he's proud of his people and his great history. But also, he carries forth the constant desire to see our city prosper and grow and make the very best of its potential and its future. It's because of his love and knowledge that he will make a great Lord Mayor and one that looks at the opportunities within the role um, he has taken to project and advance our city's share of our <coughs> interests. The people of Norwich are proud to have a Lord Mayor, one of the very few cities in Britain afforded this ancient right, and will be fortunate to have one so committed passionate to its people and its journeys. We will serve our council and city brilliantly and we will have all our support and work and endeavours ahead. So we wish you well and congratulations to you.
I'll now put that um, motion to the vote. Will all councillors present please indicate those in favour? I think that's unanimous. So that's carried. I declare the said councillor right duly elected. Councillor Ackroyd and Councillor Stannard will accompany the city clerk to collect the new Lord Mayor from the parlour. There will be a short break while we wait for their return. James Wright, having been elected to the office of Lord Mayor of the City of Norwich, hereby declare that I take the said office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties thereof according to the best of my judgment and ability.
Ladies and gentlemen, fellow councillors, honoured guests, please be seated. I would like to begin by thanking the outgoing Lord Mayor and Sheriff for their hard work over the past two years, and to councillors Ackroyd and Stonard for their kind words in proposing and seconding me to become the Lord Mayor of Norwich, and for the support of fellow councillors who have placed your trust in me to undertake this prestigious role. Being Lord Mayor is perhaps the greatest honour someone born and bred in our fine city can have bestowed upon them, and I will do my absolute best to repay that trust. I would also like to welcome my extended family to the Council Chamber, many for the first time. Although, that my no although I know that my nephew Leo is no stranger to this chair, having sat here during a Council Open Day, and I note that Leo is currently occupying the seat that I would normally occupy. And to my wife Kate, who will be Lady Mayoress, thank you for your enduring commitment and support. I've recently been reflecting on what it means to be Lord Mayor. Although I, first att although I attended the first Lord Mayor's procession as a toddler, sat on the shoulders of Councillor Ackroyd, perhaps my first recollection of meeting an actual real-life Lord Mayor was in my dentist's consulting room. The then Lord Mayor, George Richards, was our family dentist, and it always amused me that what I... What he had, he had what I subsequently knew to be a Gerald Scarf style caricature of him in the male robes displayed in the rooms. What I have become increasingly aware of as I've grown older is the importance that many people in both Norwich and the immediate suburbs place on the role of our Lord Mayor. We only have to step outside of this chamber and gaze out of the windows in the Mancroft room to understand why people are drawn to our fine city the magnificent Norman Castle, soon to be reborn, standing watch over one of the oldest outdoor markets in the country, whilst close by we have our cathedrals, our universities, our churches and pubs, apocryphally so many that a citizen can keep themselves spiritually and physically quenched for a year without entering the same building twice. And of course, our football stadium, but perhaps at the moment, the least said about that, the better. But it is, of course, the people that make our city. The Lord Mayor should strive to highlight the absolute best in our community, showcasing those organisations and individuals who are working hard to make our city what it is. Over the course of the next 12 months, I'm looking forward, along with the Sheriff, to meeting with the hundreds and thousands of in individuals associated with the charity and community groups who enrich the lives of those in our city and make it the truly special place that it is. And in so doing, to open my own eyes to some of the aspects of our city that may well have been hidden from me up until now. These events present an opportunity for us to say thank you on behalf of the city to the many citizens who work tirelessly day in, day out for the benefit of others. I couldn't finish talking about the role of Lord Mayor without acknowledging those who have gone before me, many of whom I've had the pleasure to work with. If George Richards was the first Lord Mayor that I remember, then the late Roy Blower must be the one that I mould myself on. A true Norwich boy, Roy exemplified what it was to be Lord Mayor, and as a new councillor back in 2010, Roy was so kind and helpful to me, and during my various stints as Deputy Lord Mayor, he always offered a supportive word, and would, I know, be so pleased to see me sat here today. I would now like to turn to the important announcement of which organisation will be our civic charity this year. No doubt everyone in this chamber has been struck by the plight of hunger in Norwich. Food insecurity, whether temporary or long term, puts a huge strain on families both physically and mentally. The cost of living crisis has seen the emergence of a new group of people who are suddenly finding themselves in a challenging situation where they can no longer feed themselves or their family. I am therefore pleased to announce that this year's civic charity will be the Nourishing Norfolk Initiative of the Norfolk Community Foundation, an independent local charity. Their Nourishing Norfolk Initiative aims to ensure that no one in Norfolk goes hungry by setting up food hubs in partnership with local charities. Food hubs are local places that offer people a place to shop for healthy, affordable food and are a chance to access the support they need to thrive. Whether it's advice on budgeting and cooking or mental health support, Food hubs offer the right support at the right time to prevent people from falling into crisis. Food hubs have become a focal point for communities to come together 
and think about the diverse ways they can support each other. There are four food hubs already op operating in Norwich and more on the way soon. The civic charity appeal will enable additional support to be offered in both new and, in both new and existing hubs and will also help to support the Norwich Central Distribution Hub, ensuring a reliable supply of staple food across the food hubs. I look forward to being able to support their vital work, vital work during the year. Thank you. I'm delighted that Kate Atkins will be Lady Mayoress and that Katie John Went will be my consult. The Lady Mayoress Kate Atkins will now be presented with the chain of office. I call upon Councillor Jones to move the appointment of a sheriff. Thank you, Lord Mayor, and congratulations. Thus, remember, this council bestowed the Freedom of Norwich to St Martin's Housing Trust in rightful recognition of more than 50 years' service and support to some of our most vulnerable citizens in our city. I have it from a reliable source that the certificate of this giving the freedom is now framed and proudly displayed in the head office. It's an organisation which held a special, even unique place within the hearts and minds of Norwich people over decades. And we're extremely fortunate as a council to have such a treasured partner to work with. But it's people that make organisations, their relationships with each other, and their capacity to lead them in a positive direction. The special leadership of Dr. Jan Sheldon is driving St. Martin's forward, which I deserves very important mention to them. I know that during her time as Chief Exec, she has pushed the boundaries of innovation in meeting housing need to new levels. Lord Mayor, there's no challenge too difficult for her or the amazing staff, trustees and volunteers that she so ably leads. Because homelessness is so multifaceted and multidimensional, the sophistication of the response demands this level of intelligent service delivery provided by St Martins. Jan, together with her wonderful team, serves all the praise we can offer this afternoon in recognition of this and bestowing the office of Sheriff of Norwich to her. All in this chamber will know that Jan will be a passionate and active sheriff with the values and principles so important to this run. She will make a great companion to our new Lord Mayor, and they, together with her consorts Maria, Angie, and Joe, will lead the city forward in their civic roles ahead. Give me the greatest honour, therefore, to me that Dr. Jan Sheldon, having less than qualifications, be appointed to the sheriff of this ancient city for the ensuing civil year. Thank you. Thank you. I now call on Councillor Osborne to second the motion. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Congratulations. Um, I want to echo personally what Councillor Jones has said. I think everyone here will be delighted to hear that Jan Sheldon will be taking on the role of Sheriff and will be representing the Council and the City. I'm sure that everyone here already knows and values the work that St Martins do. They provide more than a home for the homeless in Norwich. <coughs> Norwich is rightly called a fine city, but we can't let a meeting of the council pass without highlighting the fact that far too many people in the city are either left without a home or are at risk of becoming homeless. And while we're celebrating the spirit and ethos of our city today, we have to remember the appalling cost of living crisis, the spiraling housing costs, the shortages of affordable housing, and the cuts to mental health services that are affecting people and affecting the most vulnerable parties. And it's in that context that St Martins operates, um, and it's in that context that I've worked with, with St Martins and with Jan as a ward councillor. And I've seen firsthand the responsiveness, the kindness, and the persistent hard work to improve lives of people who really deserve it but are affected uh, because of these crises that I've highlighted. 
and Somatics really provides that support for people who are vulnerable and at risk. And this coming year is going to be really hard for a lot of people, but that's what we as a council are here for, and that's what Somatics are here for. And I know that Jan, as a sheriff, will be representing the, the values and that we as a council and as a city hold dear. So thank you. I will now put the motion to the vote. Will all councillors present please indicate? Those in favour? That's unanimous, thank you very much. That's carried. I declare that Dr Janet Sheldon duly appointed as Sheriff. Councillor Jones and Councillor Osborne will accompany the city clerk to collect the new sheriff from the parlour. There will be a short break while we wait for their return. And received. We worship all the Sheriff of Norwich, Dr. Jan Shelley. Janet Ruth Sheldon, having been elected to the office of the Sheriff of the City of Norwich, hereby declare that I take the said office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties thereof according to the best of my judgment and ability.
Please be seated. I call upon Dr Janet Sheldon to acknowledge the honour conferred by her appointment. Lord Mayor, Sheriff, Councillors, Lord Mayor, Sheriff, Councillors and distinguished guests, may I take this opportunity to congratulate Councillor James Wright on his appointment as Lord Mayor of Norwich. I greatly look forward to working with him and his consorts. I am humbled by the kind words of Councillor Jones and <coughs> Councillor Osborne, who have proposed and seconded me for this post. I will do my utmost to ensure the tradition of service and representation in this important office is upheld. I also have to mention with great respect the former Deputy Leader of this Council, Gail Harris, <coughs> who approached me in the first instance with the proposal of nominating me as Sheriff of this fine city. It didn't involve much arm twisting. We all know what a very special place Norwich is, often referred to as a fine city. Personally, I think we undersell ourselves here. We have an amazing history. Like most cities, we can talk of our Roman, Anglo-Saxon, Viking, Norman and medieval times. Many fine buildings and streets chart this history. In 1549, the Ketch Rebellion, a fight for inclusion and fairness for working people, took place on these very streets, not too far from where we sit today. For about 100 years from 1650, Norwich was known as England's second city. Key industries such as the shoe and boot industry not only emerged but thrived in Norwich. We have so much to be proud of, but for me it isn't the buildings, amazing though they are, or the fine cobbled streets steeped in history. It's the people, and most significantly, the people who have the culture of the people who have lived in Norwich and the legacy they have left for us all. As many of you will know, in 1566, immigrants fleeing, fleeing persecution started to arrive in Norwich. Norwich prospered. We learnt trades from each other and supported each other at a time of crisis. During this time, more than a third of the city's population comprised of immigrants. These refugees, often referred to as the strangers were welcomed. Norwich has had and continues to have a very welcoming approach to strangers and to people who have suffered persecution and unimaginable trauma. It is for this reason that I believe I am here today. Many people will know I have the enormous privilege of being the CEO of St Martin's, a local charity supporting people who are sleeping rough or who are homeless in Norfolk, people who today are suffering unimaginable trauma. St Martin's started its life in the garage of the Dean of the Cathedral. Over the last 50 years, we've grown to meet the needs of local people, offering many different types of accommodation. Now, at any one time, St Martin's is supporting over 300 people with an incredible 200 team members. We know St Martin's holds a very special place in the hearts of local people, and we are always grateful for their support. In the last street count for Norwich, seven people were sleeping rough on our streets. This is clearly seven people too many, but it's the lowest number of people recorded sleeping on the streets of Norwich since 2010. At St Martin's, we are within touching distance of our vision of no one needed to sleep on the streets. After all, it is 2023, 20, not 1823. This achievement would not be possible without the ongoing support of the City Council and the people of Norwich and Norfolk. Our city has an inclusive and welcoming culture, one we can all be proud to be part of. On a personal note, some of my guests here today will still be puzzling over how a young girl with a wonky fringe, not great at school, preferring tree climbing and sludging, comes to be standing here today. I too have puzzled over this, but it's yet another example of the city's welcoming and inclusive culture. I never did well at school and back in the 80s, it was either care or hair for young people who didn't excel at school. I could never be described as creative, so I embarked upon a career in social care. I started working as a night care worker and slowly worked my way up the career ladder, gathering a few qualifications along the way. I've been fortunate to have the experience of working with the Department of Health and Social Care and the Cabinet Office. I've had some amazing challenges and career opportunities, and I'm proud to be stood here today, a product of those challenges and opportunities. The, sheriff, the office of the Sheriff of Norwich was created in 1403, when Henry IV gave Norwich the right to appoint a mayor and a sheriff. 
Over the last 620 years, a wide variety of people have held this great office from many different walks of life and occupations. One person I'm especially proud to follow in the footsteps of is Nick Williams, a former leader and sheriff of this city, and just as importantly, one of St Martin's long-serving trustees. We also have a very proud legacy of notable women in Norwich, women who broke down inequality barriers and paved the way for future generations. Examples of these exceptional women are Ethel Mary Coleman, who in 1923 was the first female Lord Mayor in the UK. Ethel was a suffragette and a campaigner against poverty and slum housing. Dorothy Dewson was the first, first female leader of a political party in the history of Norwich City Council. Baroness Patricia Hollis of Higham was the first female leader of Norwich City Council and had held several national posts. Breaking down inequality barriers and campaigning for women's rights is something women of Norwich have been doing for many, many years. And that's another reason I'm able to stand here before you today. Before I conclude, I have a few thank yous. To my guests who love and support me and keep me grounded most of the time, thank you. To those of my guests who are representing people who should be here today, but are no longer with us, thank you. To three of St Martin's executive directors, Maria Baranowski, Angela Herbert, and Joe Gillies Wheatley, who are working alongside me as consorts this year, thank you. To my amazing team members from St Martin's, who will undoubtedly be taking on extra duties this year, thank you. Finally, I'd like to recognise and thank the previous civic team, Councillor Kevin Maguire and Caroline Gerald and their consorts, who have been dedicated, committed, hardworking, real ambassadors for Norwich for the past two years. Caroline has given me some useful advice as to what to expect in this forthcoming year. I also know from my work at St Martin's that Caroline always gives freely of her time and support. I have big robes to fill over the next year. I'm enormously honoured to be elected as the Sheriff of Norwich for 2023, and I pledge to be a hard-working local officer of dignity and ambassador for Norwich, which is so much more than a fine city. I now ask the sword bearer to invest the Sheriff's consort Angela Herbert with her badge of office. I name my under sheriff as Ms. Jane Mary Anderson. I call upon Councillor Stonard to move the vote of thanks to the outgoing Lord Mayor and the outgoing sheriff. Thank you, Lord Mayor, and congratulations. I want to pay special thanks to Councillor Kevin Maguire and Caroline Gerald for their superb and impressive service to the city and this council. Councillor Maguire was appointed at a time when the COVID-19 pandemic was still raging across the country. I recall the slimmed down, socially distant, almost strange and muted affair of mayor making we had in St Andrews Hall when our civic team were appointed. These were, after all, tough times for Norwich, and as we began to emerge from the worst impacts of a once-in-a-lifetime global pandemic. Despite this, Odd and hampered start, we don't mind me calling it that, 
uh, both Kevin and Caroline picked up the roles and powered them forward with innovation and zeal, seizing every opportunity to advance the city interests, meet people, engage with organisations and thank people across Norwich for their hard work and the service they give to others. Hundreds upon hundreds of visits connected people together and provided the chance for the council and the city to thank and recognise those who do so much to make the city of Norwich a very special and unique place to it is. Their endeavours and hard work have paid off. I know that the civic charity Home Start has raised thousands of pounds towards assisting families and children to achieve a better chance in life. The full figure will be revealed later, but we should remember the very real difference this will make to some of our poorest and most vulnerable fellow citizens. So, Lord Mayor, it falls to me that once again uh, to thank you both for your fantastic service, your commitment and effort on behalf of this council to the people of this city and the service you have rendered to Norwich. We wish you both well in your future endeavours and continued service ahead. Now, Lord Mayor, um, I move that Council first of all expresses its appreciation of the valuable services rendered to the city by Councillor Dr. Kevin Maguire as Lord Mayor and by his Lady Mayoress Julie King and his other Lord Mayor's consorts during the past year and on behalf of the citizens of Norwich records its warmest thanks. And secondly, the Council expresses its appreciation of the valuable service rendered to the city by Ms. Caroline Gerald as Sheriff and Nicholas Dixie as Sheriff's Consort during the past year, and on behalf of the citizens of Norwich, records its warmest thanks. Thank you, Councillor Stanley. <laughs> I call upon Councillor Galvin to second the motion. Thank you, Lord Mayor, and congratulations to you. Um, thank you to Kevin who has been Lord Mayor under strange circumstances. Um, through the unprecedented challenges of the pandemic and then some. He led us through Zoom meetings on his laptop and showed resilience as well as genuine care for the people of Norwich. The pandemic was initially an obstacle to Kevin becoming Lord Mayor as his appointment was delayed for a year. However, he's now served two years, longer than most Lord Mayors ever have, so things worked out well in the end. The Lord Mayor brought together two of my favourite things in poetry and the River Wensum. I know that as someone who studied ecology, you appreciate the rarity and value of this amazing chalk river, a national and international treasure that blesses our city with its presence. I'd also like to remember the wonderful evening we all had at the Lord Mayor's quiz this year, raising over two and a half thousand pounds for Home Start. Thank you, Kevin, for your service. And a few words about the outgoing sheriff. Caroline has been a warm and energetic sheriff, having carried out all sorts of visits and supported so many events across the city. Her enthusiasm for cultural and twinning projects has been truly inspiring. Thank you, Caroline. We hope you have enjoyed the experience. Thank you. I will now put the motion to the vote. Will all councillors present please indicate those in favour? Motion unanimous. So the motion is carried. I'm, I call upon the outgoing Lord Mayor, Councillor Dr Kevin, Kevin Maguire, to respond. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lord Mayor. Thank you so much, the proposer and seconder. Thank you so much, Sheriff. I am so pleased to have had a, one of those marvelous associations with both. It was the current Lord Mayor who kindly seconded me for Lord Mayor, and he made reference to something that we both share and that's a care about food poverty. And it was together the first topic that we explored when 
the Ordinaire was Chair of Scrutiny. And of course, in my time as Cabinet Member, I was so pleased that St Martin's helped to form pathways. Um, and I remember so well taking the report to the Cabinet and for its unanimous approval. It was at the time unique, another of Norwich's many, many unique and firsts way in which it formed a partnership that had one face forward, but behind it many different agencies. Back to my year, and what a year that Julie and I and the Sheriff and Head Consult Nick have had. The Sheriff will speak separately, but I want to mention them at this point. This year could in some ways be called the Royal Year. We were imposed for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, when among other things, we lit a beacon on City Hall steps. We sadly then opened the city's book of condolences when Her Majesty <coughs> died. I made the royal pro proclamation on the steps of City Hall, declaring the, the succession of Charles III, and began to learn to say, God save our gracious King. Less than three weeks ago, we had the coronation, and to round things off, Julie and I attended a royal garden party. Most of our royal related events were accompanied by several church services, including three we attended um, memorials and requiems for the death of Her Majesty Elizabeth II. Might also look at the past civic year through the eyes of the armed forces and their veterans, of which the highlight must have been Remembrance Sunday Parade and the service when all those who had served and the many connections which the city has with those serving mark the day with the magnificent parade in front of City Hall and then down to Norwich Cathedral. During that year, I was pleased to be invited by the Royal Naval Association to their Trafalgar Day celebrations and attended a ceremony to mark 100 years of the Royal British Legion in Norfolk and a very moving occasion in the Great Hospital when a pennant was added to their banner. I was pleased to host Commander Belfield of the Royal Navy in the parlour and talk about the work the city does and of course our fantastic connection with Nelson including his gift to us of his sword. Connect, carrying on that watery connection I was so pleased to be Admiral of the Wensome and it's the real reason why people stand to become Lord Mayor. <laughs> I'm proud of the connections the city has with its faith groups. And during the year, I visited the Aylesham Road Mosque, the synagogue on Aylesham Road, visited both cathedrals many times, including the ordination of the new Catholic Bishop of East Anglia, Bishop Peter, and I've attended other churches. Both cathedrals had deans appointed in the past civic year, and I was pleased that they first met in a... Um, a meeting I arranged in the Lord Mayor's Parlour. I attended a service at Norwich's Messianic Synagogue and as I said I'm not long back from Rome when um, I met the Pope only a few days before that sent, he'd sent this message to Bishop Graham and Bishop Peter blessing the 650th anniversary. Perhaps the greatest thing I did during the year was a long overdue apology to the Jewish members of the Norwich community for the blood libel of almost 900 years ago. This was a moving event at the Seder meal which was arranged by the university. And I am pleased that at that time, it was a much foregone sheriff who provided sanctuary to so many of those Jews who were libeled. In my first civic year, we had the official Lord Mayor's twi Twitter account, and I've tried very hard to keep it up. Sometimes the events have been coming too quickly, but I'm so pleased to have the great advice from our comms, and I'm pleased to see Sarah there, who's done such a wonderful job and will continue to do a wonderful job for you. 
um, a great advice on the sensitivity of tweeting. Um, I hope I've always followed it, but it's not always as straightforward and you have to think who might be hurt, who might be offended by what I've said. I would say much more about Home Start at the moment because we'll have a second bite of the cherry which will be devoted to Home Start on, on my part. As I step down in this year, gladly I'm, that um, Jan also mentioned, the centenary of Norwich appointed the first woman Lord Mayor in the country. I'm pleased that the Deputy Lord Mayor is a woman. I want to say thank you to all our city citizens and organisations who kindly invited us to so many of their occasions. I want to say thank you to all the chain gang across the county uh, for their fun and their wise words. I want to say thank you to all the officers of Norwich City Council who've helped me in various ways. A great big shout out to the chief exec, the executive directors and members of democratic services especially when they give up so many of their evenings when full council went on and on and on. Thank you to all the members of the council for electing me in the first place, for electing me a second time, and as I chaired you, for partaking in debates, motions and questions, if at times rather enthusiastically. Please be kind to the new Lord Mayor. My biggest and final thanks must go to the team who supported the Sheriff and me, shielding us at times, arranging our diaries and putting all the necessary work in so that we arrived at the correct place on the correct day at the, at the correct time. And they managed to do so with a smile. To Max and Laura, a great big thank you. And that's enough of me. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I call upon the outgoing Sheriff, Ms Caroline Gerald, to respond. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And firstly, congratulations to you and Jan for your appointment to the role of Lord Mayor and Sheriff. And thank you, Councillor Sonard and um, Councillor Galvin, for your kind words, and Kevin for your grand, sorry, ex-Lord Mayor, for your kind words. It seems quite strange to be here today and handing over the role of Sheriff after two years. Originally, the Lord Mayor and I and our consorts should have taken over these roles in May 2020. But after the realisation of the long-term impact of the COVID pandemic, it was postponed until initially November or December. And then again, we finally took over from Vaughan and Vivian and Marion and Peter in May 2021. And it's excellent to see all four of them here today. Peter now is a councillor. Um, it seems almost unreal now that everyone was so constrained in what they could do and the contingency plans which all organisations, and particularly those with statutory responsibilities, had to put in place to keep citizens as safe as possible from infection, whilst everyone was grappling with what they could and could not do. It was almost unbearable to think back over the daily TV coverage of the situation in hospitals, the tragic statistics of that time, and how long it continued. Thank goodness for all of the scientists who escalated their work to provide safe vaccines so that the world could start to come back the effects of the pandemic. As referred to earlier, mayor making in 2021 was as never known before, with the small number of people who could attend being placed at a suitable distance from each other. Remember the two metre social distancing? And masked with the whole ceremony being as simple as possible and held in St Andrew's Hall. The Lord Mayor and I, who had never met before that day, were placed on the stage with our consorts behind us, and we could not even hand over the chains, as we did today, from one sheriff to another, and of course no reception afterwards. It's been interesting to reflect back on those early days. My first engagement was with Future Radio to talk about being sheriff, and the first in-person event was a visit to Woodside House Care Centre in Sork, and then a very small civic service in Norwich Cathedral. Then a few weeks later, the launch of the fantastic Dippy the Dinosaur exhibition in the cathedral, where we also attended a special open evening for members of the health service and other services to recognise their commitment during COVID. One of our most fondly remembered moments was when at a popular community festival in Slowbottom Park, 
A small boy came up to Nick and shyly asked how you got to be Lord Mayor. That first year was strange with the COVID guidance changing frequently and many events not happening. We were delighted to be asked to continue in the roles for a second year. It has been interesting to reflect back on a few of the events over both years. One striking one was Norwich Open Christmas, where in 2021, the amazing team offered meals from a stall outside St Andrew's Hall. That was another one of those periods where the, when the country was virtually locked down. And then the contrast with Christmas 2022, when it was back in full swing, organised with such precision and providing food and company to so many, and bringing together many volunteers who wanted to help make, Chris, make a better Christmas for others. The events we've attended have been innumerable, and we have seen this as a great privilege to be invited to such a wide range of activities. From the grand to the intimate, the Norwich <coughs> Cathedral, St Peter Mancroft, the ministers in Great Yarmouth and Kings Lynn, to the synagogue, to char charities, scout groups, commemorative events, the opening of sports facilities, to award ceremonies, to concerts, to meeting the Japanese ambassador, to art exhibitions and the Lord Mayor's procession, and particularly supporting Homestart Norfolk, our char chosen charity. The list does go on and on. I won't go on and on, but it does go on and on. Um, I thought that I knew Norwich quite well beforehand, but it has been so interesting to have the opportunity to delve more deeply into the community and meet so many people who contribute to making this a better and stronger place. One of the probably unique experiences has been that we were in post for the 70th anniversary of the accession to the throne of Queen Elizabeth II her sad death a few months later, and the proclamation and coronation of King Charles III. It was memorable to be involved with events around those momentous occasions. For finishing, I want to say a huge thank you to all of the organisations which have welcomed us over the past two years. It is good to see some of them represented here today, and I know that others will be joining us later. A huge thanks to the civic team of Laura, Max, Lucy and Stuart, the Supers and the comms team who have supported us over the two years and organised and guided us. Thank you to all the members of the City Council for appointing me to the role and extending it to make an exceptionally, full, an exceptionally fulfilling time. I also want to record my thanks to Alan Waters and Gail Harris who are not here today as they have also handed over their batons. They have been a constant support to us and made such a contribution to the City Council over so many years. Lastly, thank you to Kevin and Julie, who have made the past two years such fun, and to Nick for really getting stuck into supporting me in the, this role and enjoying it as much as I have. I wish Jan every success in taking up the robes, hat and chains and parlour of the Sheriff of Norwich. She's a great appointment and I know that she will have a very enjoyable time in office. Thank you. Thank you. I call upon Councillor Mike Sands to move the election of a Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor, and it gives me great pleasure to move that uh, Councillor Caroline Ackroyd be elected as Deputy Lord Mayor for the coming civic year. Thank you. Thank you. I call upon Councillor Jones to second the motion. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, it's with great pleasure that I second this motion for Councillor Caroline Ackwood to be the Deputy Lord Mayor. I would just like to add to you, she's an exceptional member of this council, and it would be a real pleasure to see her in that role in supporting Councillor Wright. Thank you. I will now put the motion to the vote. Will all councillors present please indicate those in favour? That's unanimous. Uh, thank you. Congratulations, Councillor Ackroyd. <laughs> so, I, I suppose I'm going to say the formal words. I, I declare the said Councillor Carolyn Ackroyd duly elected. We now call uh, move to the election of the leader of the council. I call upon Councillor Jones to move the election of the leader of the council. Thank you, Lord Mayor. It gives me a special pleasure to move the election of Councillor Mike Stollard as leader of Norwich City Council. This is the first time in many years we've had a new leader, so I'd like to take a couple of minutes just to talk about Mike, Mike briefly. Um, and he's got a story worth listening to that should give us confidence about the future ahead of us. Over many years I've come to know and deeply respect him. 
Mike comes from a solid working class family from the East End of London. His father was the youngest of seven children. He grew up in Bay, East London, and was forced to leave school at 14 because the family couldn't afford for him to stay on. By the time Mike was born, the family had made it out to Hounslow, West London, living on the side of the noisy A4 Great West Road in the even noisier flight path of Heathrow Airport. Mike says it felt like the aircraft might scrape the roof of the house, and this is why he could sleep through almost anything. Despite very limited family income, he benefited from the post-war labour boom. Access to free healthcare, Mike remembers those days when his mother could get Marmite and special tables from the local health clinic, child health clinic, where he also got his free vaccinations and child health checks, all renting new rights from the NHS. Plus, there was a growing social housing, free education, social services, and an economy that was full with full employment in which working people could still expect to receive a decent living in return for their hard work and their labour. He became labour through the environment that he lived, in, lived around, seeing the benefits of people coming together through trade unionism, the power of municipal socialism to build mass housing, provide security and opportunity, and protect and advance people's rights. He, like members of his family, especially his grandfather, his, like members of his family, is a practical socialism that seeks to change the world to provide for people the support that which gives the community the right power, wealth and opportunity into the hands of many, not just a few. Access to health and the freedom of fear of poor health have been my full passions for Mike. He and his older brother were the first and saw our family to go to university, with Mike coming to UEA, like many of us here, in Norwich in the late 1970s and falling in love with the city. He joined the National Health Service and has worked his entire working life within it, seeking to lead and develop better health systems and outcomes for people. At one point, the NHS Trust he was leading had reduced its waiting time so much that patients were starting to complain they were too short. <laughs> when he finished in the NHS, he moved on to become Chair of Future Projects, a charity based in North Ireland, which developed and expanded innovative and wraparound support for some of the poorest and most excluded in our city. He became a city councillor and a non-executive director of a local called primary care provider in the city. I don't think we can doubt his commitment to Norwich. Mike is rooted in his belief in equality, advancing and protecting it. He was an active member of Norwich Pride in his early days, and the chair, and he volunteered for the LGBT plus community and fought to protect LGBT plus community wherever he's lived. Mike will be a leader who puts people first, prioritises equality and uses the power and resources of this council to extend the protections and securities and opportunities local government can offer to better give people the decent lives they have the right to demand and expect to receive. And personally, I'm excited by the opportunity to work alongside Mike, his positive and inclusive approach and his dedication to achieving success for this city. As his deputy, I look forward to working with him in the time ahead the challenges all of us in this chamber will face as we collectively do our best to serve the great people of our city and build a better knowledge together. So I hope you'll support me in supporting Mike as the leader of the Norwich City Council. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you. I call upon Su Councillor Sue Sands to second the motion. Well, it's very hard to uh, come after that. Never come after Councillor Jones when she's making a fair speech. I'd just like to say it gives me great pleasure to second the motion for my good friend and comrade Mike Stoller, and uh, I'm sure he's going to be brilliant in trying to keep this place himself, of course. And uh, yes, I'd like to call me second the motion. Thank you. I will now put the motion to the vote. Will all councillors present please indicate those in favour? Any against? Abstentions? I declare that's carried. I declare that said Councillor Mike Stone are duly elected. Item number seven, having elected Councillor Mike Stonard as leader of the council, I call upon council to note his cabinet appointments. These are detailed on item seven of the agenda. And I call upon Councillor Driver to move the appointment of the Honorary Recorder. Thank you, Lord Mayor, and congratulations. Um, I move that the Councillor appoint uh, on January. Thank you. 
Now on to item 10. Um, I'd like to call upon Councillor Stonard to move item 10, please. Thank you, Lord Mayor. So I'd like to move that the Council elect A, Councillor Ackroyd to chair the Street Committee, and B, Councillor Price to chair the Audit Committee for the new city year. C, that we elect Councillor Stookley to the chair of the Licensing and Regulatory Committees, and Councillor Driver to the chair of the Planning and Applications Committee. That we E, D, that we approve the schedule of ordinary meetings of the Council and note the schedule for main committees for the new civic year. And E, that we delegate to the head of legal and procurement in consultation with the leaders of the political groups the appointment of members in accordance with the political balance rules to committees, joint committees, and other working parties and panels of the Council. Thank you. I call upon Councillor Jones to second the motion. Thank you. Um, second the motion and reserve the right to speak. Thank you. Well, I will now put the motion to the vote. Will all councillors present please indicate? Those in favour? Yep, yeah, that's carried. Um, thank you very much. Well, that concludes the uh, business of the meeting today. Thank you all very much for your attendance and support. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand? The newly appointed Lord Mayor and the Sheriff, together with their respective consorts will now leave the council chamber for the proclamation of their appointments from the steps of city hall and official photographs you are welcome to join us and please gather quickly at the bottom of the steps where you are also welcome to take photographs there will follow a reception in the mantrop room once the newly appointed civics have returned Civic Party will now retire from the Council of Chamber.